A few years ago I built this small speaker and it worked great until it broke. So in this video I want to build a better one that's a class AB because it's a good compromise between efficiency and simplicity. To start off let's take a very quick look at how class AB amplifiers work. We have two transistors, an NPN and a PNP bipolar, where their emitters are connected together. The base emitter voltage is always kept biased by another diode that ideally has the same forward voltage as the diode in the bipolar transistor. This makes it so that both transistors are always at least slightly conducting. In this way, when the signal crosses the middle point, it doesn't have a step like Class B amplifier would. Now that we're experts on Class AB amplifiers, let's take a look at the schematic that I had in mind and understand how it works. On the left, we have the input coming in. The first resistor is just for high impedance, just for added protection. The 10k to ground is to actually activate the output of my phone's jack because otherwise it doesn't even know that it's plugged in. Then we have to bias it to half of the supply voltage because the signal is going to swing around this point. So at first I used an LM7805 to make things simple, assuming that the supply voltage is maybe 10 volts or so. This trick actually keeps us from needing a dual power supply, which simplifies things a lot as far as supplies go. Then I add in an op amp that I chose to be an LM301. This adds some good things about it. One is that you can short the output without damaging it, so it's going to be a lot more forgiving if we make mistakes. Then it also has some external pins that allow for stabilization and balance of the input offset. The balance isn't necessary, but the capacitor between pin 1 and 8 is necessary, otherwise it's going to start oscillating at high frequency. A few tens of picofarads should be enough. I only had 100 picofarad once, I'm going to use that. If you use a bigger one still, you're going to start hearing that it lowers the high frequencies, so it kind of becomes like a low pass filter. So without wasting any more time, I'd go ahead and start building this thing, even though it's not the final version. And then we can talk about how to improve it and what things to change to make it work as well as possible. Alright, so let's get to testing the circuit. So what I'm going to do to figure out how well it works is to use a qualitative approach, which isn't at all a good way of measuring performance, but it's kind of the only thing I can do, is to use two channels of the oscilloscope to look at the input and the output and then see how well I can overlap them. And ideally, if it's working perfectly, that has great fidelity, then it should make it so that the two traces are indistinguishable and I can overlap them and it just looks like one. So after connecting the input to my phone and putting some music on, we can take a look at the traces on the oscilloscope and we can see that they're not bad but they're also not perfect. It seems like the output might have a little bit of uh, attenuation of the high frequencies. Everything's a little bit more rounded off. So I also tried doing a frequency sweep and we can see that the gain kind of changes a little bit throughout the sweep. So it's not perfect obviously, but as far as how well it sounds, I think it already sounds pretty good. But let's see if we can improve this. Now we all know that breadboards offer good versatility in exchange for terrible reliability. But what instead has great performance and versatility is BenQ's latest IdeaCam S1 Plus. Whether you're looking to give the best impression possible in an online meeting, show off your latest projects in great detail, explain concepts as clearly as possible, or check the quality of your soldering, the IdeaCam S1 Plus has your back. The free Inspire software allows you to capture everything you need in great detail. The camera also includes smart noise cancelling, a sensor that flips the image as soon as you point the camera down, and all magnetic attachments, including the macro lens. The ring light on the front allows your subjects to get great lighting and is activated manually by a button on top. Another button allows you to freeze the image in any moment so you can take your time and explain whatever you need to. There's also a privacy cover that you can snap on magnetically whenever you're not using the camera to cover and protect the lens. So whether you want to give great presentations, create DIY YouTube videos, or explore the tiny details of your projects, check out the IdeaCam S1 Plus with the links in the description. So the next thing I want to try is connecting the feedback from the output of the actual AB amplifier instead of the output of the op amp. And ideally this should give a perfect output that's exactly like the input because it has feedback and it can correct any small mistakes. Although this is obviously not so simple. 
and uh, actually I was expecting it to be better but I guess it's not that great for now but we can still modify some things one of the things that I noticed is that at a certain point the two transistors start getting kind of hot and if I look at the current you can see that it goes over 100 milliamps which shouldn't be the case especially because it's not actually amplifying anything right now this is caused by a phenomenon that's often called thermal runaway this basically consists of when the transistor starts heating up a little bit just because it has some power loss then the voltage drop between base and emitter drops as well because it has inverse proportionality to the temperature this causes a positive feedback loop because more current means more heat and more heat means more current and so at a certain point you just burn your transistor to keep this from happening we can put small value resistors right after the emitter of both transistors this essentially counteracts the positive feedback so it keeps current stable and in fact if we look at the quiescent current draw we can see that it's like 35 milliamps so a lot lower than before so testing it again we see that it kind of works okay but we also notice that at a certain voltage of the output there seems to be some very high frequency oscillation it's not anything that i can personally hear but it's not not a good thing to have means there's a little bit of instability so I found that putting a series resistor after the output of the op amp actually cuts this down and now if we look at the output we can see that it's actually looking pretty great if I try to overlap the input and the output they're basically a perfect match and so this is pretty nice I forgot to do a frequency sweep but I'm pretty sure it would work pretty well now we can add the few final touches and that's to put a potentiometer to compensate the input offset and the problem with input offset is when you turn up the gain a bunch then the output kind of drops or rises and then we can add our LM317 just to have input voltages different than 10 volts although this isn't too important because I noticed that this op amp isn't at all a rail to rail output so the volume is kind of limited now as a few final comments I have to say I am pretty happy about how this worked out. I wasn't expecting it to work this well. I was hoping for higher volume, but I guess, you know, you can't have everything. I also think that increasing the gain a bunch would create instability problems, but I'm not sure. I think it's kind of always a compromise with these things. But if we wanted to have higher gain, we could potentially add a pre-amplification before the AB stage. For example, with a class A amplifier that just has one transistor. And the only thing is then to have feedback from the output this wouldn't work the way it is because the signal gets inverted with the class a amplifier we would have to have our op amp inverting as well I think I'm not sure I didn't test it but anyway this might be the topic for another video in any case I want to thank you for watching the video leave any of your thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one